What do we got here, Chad? So what we have here is a uh, brand new car that had an unfortunate mishap. Um, since it's a two-wheel drive, there's no drive unit here. And Look at that big hole there. Yeah. So this is, can happen on a two-wheel drive. It can also it happens on all-wheel drives. We've seen it happen before. But this one was a lot worse because there's nothing there to take the impact. He ran over something and it punched through the belly pan. And what it did was it hit this, this plastic bullet tube right here and it smacked the battery nipple and it cracked the nipple right here. You can see it cracked the bottom half of that nipple. Yeah. Problem is Tesla says the only way to fix this is to replace the battery. Really? At $16,000. No, that's cheap, right? Yeah. So they're like, yeah, it's junk, you can't fix it, you need a, you need a battery. Uh, I say otherwise. Um, this cooling system is very low pressure, maybe mm -hmm. one PSI, two PSI at the most ever. Um, these can't really take high pressure to begin with. So one of our um, friends had this happen to his and they actually told the car on him. <laughs> um, the, so another friend brought, bought it and we fixed it and, and they still drive it around just that today with it. Uh, what we did is we took the, cut the nipple at the brake and then, um, so this nipple broke a little differently. This one broke right here where the locking ring is. Yep. So it's a little bit more complicated. The other one snapped off a little further back. So we had a little more, more meat to play with. But what we did is we cut it off and then we threaded the uh, battery pack half and then threaded this half with a pipe thread. And then used a pipe thread sealant and then threaded it back together again. Very and clever. Put it back on and it works great. No problem. So I mean, it is. Gonna, just plumbing after all. Exactly. So that's what we're going to do here. Sweet. Also, don't mind the noise. The uh, super manifold's a little pissed off right now because yeah. there's not a lot of coolant. Yeah, it's low in coolant because it emptied its, all of its coolant on the, on the road. So let's try as minimally invasive procedure as possible to try to cut this off. I'm just going to start with a utility knife, and this may take a minute. I mean, if you look down in it, you can see. <laughs> the blade just goes right in. <laughs> it's so close now. There it is. Okay, so we're going to clean that up, smooth it out, and do the same to the nipple. What do we got? So here's the nipple that we cut off. And we filed it smooth on the, on the back side. And the reason for that is because we're going to use a pipe thread tap. What I do is I cut the threads in this. Um, and this here is the nipple that I cut off of here. Correct. So what I did was I used a rubber strap wrench on this and then I tapped out the threads in here. And the reason we're doing that is because we're going to take a nipple, brass nipple, and use a sealant on, on the threads, of course. But we're going to thread that in to the nipple and we're going to tap this and then we're going to thread this back into the battery. It's almost like it was like that way to begin with. Right. Like I said, it doesn't take a, it's not a lot of pressure in the system, so the thread and the seal is, is fine. Um, and then the brass, uh, I've used brass and cool and this cool before it, it has no reactions with it, so we're safe to use that. Perfect. So we're gonna use our start uh, cutting some threads in the, the battery pack here. Okay. So, a little unnerving. Yeah. So we, we took that off, we filed it smooth, and we're gonna start by hand and you want to try to get it as straight as possible. I'll do it up totally by hand just to make sure. Because it's it is plastic, so it starts real easy. It's really easy to damage too if you're not careful. Yeah, if that tap slips at all, you can mess up your starter threads and then you're in trouble. Right. And you don't want to go in at an angle because you start at a slight angle here. By the time you get back far enough, you're already in danger or in trouble. You're at a 45 by then. Yeah, the uh, it's going in kind of at an angle and it doesn't follow the hole. Yeah. And if you do it really wrong, you can actually cut through the wall. Correct. So I'm using a short, a short one. I'm not using a long tap, just in case. Break. And once we're done doing this, we have to flush out the pipe and get the plastic chips out. So we have just a uh, little turkey baster, so to speak, and some water, we'll just flush it out. So what we want to do is take some water, 
Um, the way this coolant port works, it goes in and curves up. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some water and just shoot, shoot it in and let it flow out to get all the chips out. That's perfect. I should get your phone right in that stream, right? Yes. <laughs> so, uh, dry fit. We're not going to put any sealant on it just yet. Just make sure this works. I got a hex nut on this, on this double end fitting here. And the reason for that is I don't want to use this piece to thread this whole brass piece in to the battery. I want individual control of how much I tighten it on each side so I don't crack this. So using mm -hmm. one with the hex is great. But you can get a, a, uh, a nipple like this and thread it in and make it even closer if you really want to. I don't like that because I don't want to tighten this too much and crack it. No. That makes sense. So now we just got to pull that out, throw some yeah. actual pipes, uh, thread sealer on it rather. Yep, and tighten it up. And we're good to go. We got our thread sealant on here. You don't want to tighten this too tight, so just... And just wipe off the excess. I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, the nipple piece that's going to be threaded on there, and we're good to go. So here's how it looks when it's finished. Looks pretty good. All I have to do is reconnect these coolant hoses on both sides here. Fill the system, bleed it, and we're good to go.